Hi everyone, welcome to uh, this new reaction. Uh, so today we're reacting to uh, to see the next part of the dream by Paranol. Basically, Alejandro he's been like super obsessed with Paranol for some reason because they get, they make good music or whatever. So yeah, I listened to this album like three times, but I fell asleep every single time because it was like really late at night, and I was just like, I don't even know, but I don't remember the songs. But then Alejandro made me watch uh, the Lily Choo Choo movie. Very good movie. He didn't make me watch it, but, you know, I watched it. Very good movie. He watched it, too. And apparently there's references to that movie in this album. But, yeah, today Paranol dropped another album, which we're going to react to later. But I got to see this one first. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. You... <laughs> All right, let's go, Paranol. Heard... Let's go. Beautiful Warp. I haven't heard this album, like, 500 times yet. Yeah, yeah you totally have listening. never listened to it. All right, yeah, but yeah, yeah it's okay. Enzo and I's first time, technically. So yeah, let's go. Second time, third time, fifth time. It's from the movie! Ah! <laughs> Oops. Damn. Dang, bro, those bass frequencies. I think... Very gritty. <laughs> gritty. Oh, I say right. <laughs> yeah. Imagine it's just that clip just came up. It was like a sample he used. I say right. I think this is the most popular song on the album. I can see why. It's the intro. Usually the intro song is more. Well, yeah, just because, you know. Oh, my blob. It's a thing. God, now I'm listening to this album. I want my vinyl. Give me my <laughs> vinyl, man, from uh, Maine. Give it to me now. I like the vocal mixing in this one. Yeah. Sounds like I... you're singing through like a... I, I don't know. The Xbox mic. I kind of yeah. don't. I have to make it It's like... I like I the bad like quality of it. Mixed. Yeah. I get why, why like, you, like... People wouldn't, but yeah. I don't know, I like it. Because I I mean I, I listen to After the Magic and I like the clearer vocals. Yeah. That's why I would say listen to this album first. So it works better with the more melodic, like yeah. kind of like majestic uh, production. Well you can see the evolution from this to his new album. Yeah, no, I definitely can. can. Stop yeah. bro. Why are we talking about good. the new album right now? <laughs> I like how you can hear the piano in the background. Yeah, it's like an I Undertale piano. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the best things about this song, I think, is the piano. I think it adds... It's, it, re adds. it reminds me of a specific song from Undertale. I don't know what it is, though. Bro, I took inspiration from Undertale. <laughs> no way, thanks, Bear, no. All right, good okay, song. So Very good song. good. Yeah. I've been listening to it a lot, actually, so yeah, I mean... I just... I don't wow. need to tell you guys what I think about any of these songs because I love all of them. So. Would you say this is your favorite album right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I, I, like, I have to, I have to listen to more of After the Magic to to see if it's yeah. like my favorite. I could see, like it's different. It's different from what no! any of his other albums were. Or, no. or, like, I, I I would say after listening to this and after listening After the Magic, listen to the Let's Walk on the Path of Blue Cat. It's pretty much instrumentals only, but it's like mm -hmm. it's probably his least favorite album by me. Like it, it probably goes to see the next part of the dream, um, to uh, after the magic and then let's walk yeah. on the path of the blue cat. But all of them are good, and yeah, this is my favorite. This will be my favorite for I don't know how long. <laughs> well, um, I think this was a good opening song. I mean, five minutes and twenty seconds was a bit long, but I think that the um the chorus was catchy. And oh. I like the instrumental and all that, so I thought it was it was good. What I was gonna say is I like this song too. I just I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence with the vocal mixing. That's Does really it ruin the song for you? It doesn't ruin it entirely. It's just I I'm just kind of a little on the fence about it. Yeah. It's it something just, you gotta get used it to. Just sounds, it just sounds like he's just like doing it through a tin can, and, yeah. I, and that, that that might that might add to the aesthetic, but I, I don't know if it's. Like, I don't think he did it on purpose personally. Though. I think oh really? He, he genuinely recorded this on like, like you know, that's how a, a lot of like shoe days. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, I think it sounds cool though. They do. Yeah. I mean, but that—that's what gives the like the genre its flavor, you know. Mm -hmm. 
it, it, yeah, it sounds. I mean, terrible. if it had better vocal mixing, I don't think I would like the song better or worse. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it would be the same because, like, the mixing isn't, like, so horrible that it's, like, ow, this is hurting my ears. Like, it's annoying. I've heard worse. I've, yeah, I, I, And exactly. this isn't even bad. I've just, mm -hmm. I, the, you know, I, 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 I agree with Ethan, but I see where Enzo's coming from, yeah. too. Let's move on to Excuse. Okay, this might be, like, my one of my favorites, like, as of recently, because I've been listening to this album more, and this one's up there. Dang, I love how like compressed the drums are. Like you can yeah. hear it. They're always very loud. They're like kind of the center of mm -hmm. like this the songs usually. Okay, I will say I do like the vocals here a little bit more. I, I love the vocals on this, on this song. Mm. Oh, this is cool. Dang. <laughs> Drummer's popping off right now, bro. He is the drummer. <laughs> he is he's, popping he's, off right now. Yeah, he, he's all in one. That's one thing I learned. Paranormal's literally one guy. Hmm. It's not a band. I thought I was a band for like a long time. Thing. I love how they add in like little things that you can barely hear. Yeah, like they like samples or like um like like the. There's like an arpeggio. Oh my god, what is it? Yeah. That's loud scream. Anyway, there's like a little arpeggio like this. It's playing right now, but. Yeah, it's like and it's been throughout the song too. Mm -hmm. When I'm in a screaming in a shoegaze song competition <laughs> and my opponent's paranoid. Ah! Good song, oh. very good. I like it better than the first one. Me, me as well. Drums were hard, guitars were. The only thing I didn't like was at the end when he was like, ah! like mm -hmm. I, I feel like it could have had more power to it because like everything else had so much power. <laughs> it was a very heavy song. <laughs> I just, I just went on like this album on album of the year, and I went to Brad Taste, and he dis he described this album that, or he said many moments came across like eating a bowl of nails. What? Bro's <laughs> never listened to Shugas before. All right, so the next song is Analog Sentimentism. Oh, Sentimentalism. This, so good. this is my favorite. When I when I first listened to the album, this is my favorite. This the one that Riley posted. Good start, very good start. Yay! Yippee! What? <laughs> was that part of the song? No, it wasn't. No, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This has, a, this has like the same vocal melody as We Shine at Night. Oh, whoa. I liked it. I thought it was good. Um... I think the vocals could have been louder. I would have yeah. enjoyed it better if I heard it more. Um, but it wasn't that big of an issue. I like the part in the middle where it's like slower. I think that was like one of my favorite parts of the track was the I like the beginning up. too. Like how it starts. I think I mm -hmm. think it, it kinda gets you engaged already. It's very like energetic and like fast paced. I like again, it a lot. Uh, again, I think I think the song is good and I, I like the instrumentation. I just think that, like, again, like, the only thing really holding the song back is the vocals. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know, like, because when when the introduction started, I'm like, okay, like, we're like we're picking up the pace a little bit, and it was like I was, I'm like, this this sounds really good, and then the mm -hmm. vocals came in, and then, like it just threw me off. 
Yeah. I, don't know, I think you just don't like like the like the distorted vocals, I guess, like the you know, like the shoot more shoot gaze, but, like. But like, I like what what's the song called? Uh, I like the I like the vocals on Excuse, and they're pretty much the yeah. Same. It, I think it's track to track. Sometimes it, it I think, depends because I agree with Enzo on this one. I think this one could have benefited from cleaner vocals. Yeah. I don't know. I think that the the vocals either sound good or like misplaced to me under like the context of the song. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they just they have to fit in a certain way for me to like immerse myself into them. All right. The next song is the ten minute and one second song. Apparently, uh, White Ceiling. We're gonna listen to <sighs> Here this. Here we go. Uh... <laughs> I, I would like to clarify that I did not like this song the first time I heard it. So let's see if if I change my mind. Oh, I remember this part because I was sleeping and then I was like, oh. <laughs> it woke you up. <laughs> it didn't wake me up, but I was like, what is that? Because <laughs> I was like it, the in-between zone of like about to sleeping. fall asleep. Yeah. Look, Ethan, the clip is going to come up. You probably recognize this. The it's screaming? The of, yeah. It's yeah, the is it the guy the in the field where, like, he's... Yeah. yeah. And I can literally, like, imagine that scene, like, in my brain, like, perfectly. I know. Very good actors. Very, very good. I like that song a lot. I thought it was really good, actually. I, especially the end. Like, this whole, like, past two minute Four part. minute. Or yeah, four, yeah, I don't know how long minute. it is, but this, the whole thing with, like, I don't know. It's kind of the same repeating thing with just uh, talking and stuff and clips in the background. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. I, I, I appreciate this track more, like, knowing where the clips came from. Mm -hmm. like, and how yeah, much definitely. The, like, how much he was influenced by Lily Chu Chu. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's cool. This is, pro this is probably my favorite song on the album. Honestly. Well, I mean, I guess I guess I can't really appreciate it since I didn't like I didn't watch the movie. But I mean, my thoughts haven't really changed. I do like it a little bit more. I just don't think that the idea here makes like I don't think it validates the runtime. I think the song could have easily summarized its point in like half the amount of time. Yeah, that's I don't know. True. It's just I, I like because I love long songs. Like I, I mean. I, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, this kind of reminds me of the Caught in the Sun by Boom Boom Satellites, which is 10 minutes and 26 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing over and over again. But the thing with that song is it's like it it it, it implements like different ideas. It keeps changing it, it, like throughout the song. It keeps changing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking throughout too. The song I was like, and it could it could benefit from like new I, ideas I, throughout. That, yeah, that's that's kinda that's kinda how I feel. I feel that I feel that this song like its idea didn't validate 10 minutes pretty much so i'm just, yeah i'm still not i get that. yeah for me it's just this song is just an experience that's why i i like yeah that's that that's long. what i was gonna say too is that like with this like type of music in particular and shoegaze and all that i feel as though like 
regardless of how many new ideas like it would be good to see new ideas but even it, like when there aren't i still think it's worth it because it's just like you kind of just feel the sound of the song like yeah. the whole time the thing that validates it being 10 minutes is the fact that it is 10 minutes for me this is one of those songs you just sit there in your bed and just like listen yeah. to it. you just sink it it feels like you're just sinking in your bed listening to it like it literally is an experience yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not denying like that like the song itself sounds good it's de it definitely sounds good it's pretty i like it it's just like i don't like it as much as what i've already heard from the album and i still like uh, you you brought up the point of like immersing yourself into the song. I don't think the idea here really immerses me mm -hmm. as much as most ten minutes song do. I didn't like the song. I don't think at all. I, I not at all. I just I don't think I really cared for the song because it was long and I just thought it dragged on. But like when I came, I just had to. I revisited it a lot, and then mm -hmm. now I I love it. Now it's my favorite from like my least favorite to my favorite. <laughs> so. I don't actually like downright hate it though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It has elements that are very strong. Especially the yeah. drums. The drums have been very consistent this yeah, entire the drums album. Are, They're the really drums cool. Are, yeah, the drums are cool. Oh yeah, title track. To see the next part of the dream. Oh my god, it's the actual thing. I think you guys are gonna like the intro to this one. So. I mean, the like self-titled songs for albums are usually like really good. Mm-hmm. Because I like to think that those are the songs that like represent the record or like mm -hmm. supposed to represent the record. Well, this sounds really nice. Different, different vibe. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Dang, man, just straight into it. Okay. I sound like whales. <laughs> bro, bro caught the sounds of whales for this song specifically. <laughs> They're on like the feature list. <laughs> yeah, I got this random whale, I don't know. <laughs> that was it? What? Yeah, that was kind of weird. Yeah. I feel like five minutes. Yeah, it didn't. Okay, I like that song. I I I kind of I kind of like like the break from like the, the kind of like I don't, I don't know how to explain like the clustered the heaviness, the, the the heaviness of the production. Yeah. I kind of I kind of like that this is like kind of like a br breath of fresh air. Yeah, and it's like in the middle of the album. And so, well. like, do you remember that it's like the uh, the interlude from um, I didn't mean to haunt you? It kind of feels like that. The memories we lost in translation. Yeah, yeah, it's like after such a big song, and then like right after you have like this like chill sort of like like mm -hmm. to kind of refresh you. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what it feels mm -hmm. like. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. I I kind of agree and disagree at the same time. The biggest thing I dislike about this song is that it didn't lean more heavily into like the guitar at the beginning and like the difference. Because, like, it kind of mm. goes straight from this, like, it's like, oh, wow, this is a different idea back into, like, exactly what we were doing before in the previous tracks. And it only mm. really brings it back at, like, the very end. Yeah. I feel like it would have been cool to see, like, what they would have done with, a like, a more traditional guitar sound and, like, maybe softer yeah. drums or something. But they didn't really lean into it. They kind of just forgot about the guitar and went straight back into, like, the normal. Now we got a uh, Age of Fluctuation. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's pretty good. Yeah, it starts out really good. Dang, what is this? Doom? guitar okay that's cheating you can't put rain ambience in your album you know <laughs> i'll like it albums with nature recordings are superior in every way that's true 
He, he does have a point. He does have a point. Well, Yachty's album didn't have nature recordings in it. Shit, yeah, it sucks! <laughs> Oh, I like the bells that accompany the guitar here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Shit's an aggressive lullaby. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like one of those things that you like turn. What are those called? Uh, uh, music boxes, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, bro, the end of this song is great. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Alejandro for a second. Oh. Dang, this should sound like an anime opening. It does. Oh, that was a cool ending. Okay. Um, I think that, that the trash. I think Just that kidding. the um this song actually validates its runtime a lot better than White Ceiling did. I think that the idea here is a lot stronger, and I think that there's like like a ton of variation, not too much variation, but like just enough to the point where it doesn't feel too dragged out it mm -hmm. felt a little dragged out at the ending like for the last minute but yeah, that I didn't really like destroy the song for me so i think this is like in like way better than what i'd seen i feel like the song should have ended when he was like screaming really loud <laughs> yeah like me yeah but yeah i agree with Enzo completely this song is very good i liked it a lot um i i kind of forgot this song because it wasn't however I didn't, I didn't hate it <laughs> however however I'm not a big fan of the vocals at the at the at the start. They were they were kind of hurting my ears a little bit. I don't know why. I feel like they were very like high in pitch, like not high in pitch, but like the, like the I EQ feel like is high. yeah, the EQ. I yeah. feel like he maxed out the high yeah. frequencies all <laughs> the way to the top. Yeah, he probably uh, did it, do that because like the, every the so guitar, the guitar probably takes up the entire spectrum of the EQ. So he probably has yeah. to do that in order for you to hear the vocals at all. <laughs> yeah, so that that's like the only thing holding the song back for me in the like the last minute, just a little. Mm -hmm. But like other than that, this this is this is a good song that validates its run time pretty well. Alright, the next song is called Youth Rebellion. Star Wars reference? Oh my oh my Paramore? I met a girl and I really <laughs> thought she liked me. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm 30. It's funny because I know what he's referencing. <laughs> and I hate those kids in your high school. Oh, dang, this song kind of sounds better without the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, bro, oh my god. <laughs> what happened? Bro is gonna make his arms fall off, I swear to god. <laughs> this song did not deserve this. <laughs> Just came out of nowhere. What? <laughs> what the hell? I kinda like it. We it was cool, it. but what? it's like, what? Still going? I yeah, thought that was we, got a, we got two minutes left. <laughs> what? Epic drummer break. Funnily enough, for a song called Youth Rebellion, the vocals here sound a lot more boyish than usual. What confused me is that I, since I didn't see like where we were in the song, I assumed that we were like completing it at the five minute mark. 
Mm -hmm. and when that drum solo whatever that hell that thing was came in i like really enjoyed it because i i thought that that was happening at the end of the song yeah but then we still had like in a whole (laughs) entire minute left and it just completely threw me off yeah i feel like this song would have been much better if that was implemented at the very end yeah Uh, i agree i also so random i don't don't know yeah um i think that i mean i guess that was cool but i i don't know the drum thing could have done without it i don't really care it was interesting but like Uh, didn't add anything it's not like i'm gonna look forward to it when i listen to this song again yeah but also like i think i didn't really like the vocals in this song like i thought that like the parts without the vocal like the instrumentation in this song really good like it's like Mm -hmm. this the song itself it's a really cool idea and i like it but then like with the vocals i don't know (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't make as much sense as like i feel it's like there. track six or five yeah. yeah it's just it's just kind of there because like it is listenable and it does fit with the album but it's mm-hmm. not like anything that i'm gonna want yeah. to like revisit specifically ever mm-hmm. all right well we can move on to extra story damn it's not like omar apollo It's good. Yeah, um, <laughs> somehow this felt more like filler than the other one. Yeah. Youth, Youth Rebellion felt like it was out of place for the record, but this just feels like it was thrown in. This didn't really do much in its three-minute runtime. And I, the vocals aren't that great either. Yeah, I I like the change in instrumentation, like the the kind of softer guitar and the, the little mm-hmm. bells and all that. But the vocals, I feel like, hold it back. Because like, he doesn't change his vocal inflection at all. And I feel like since it's not like covered up by extremely loud guitar and drums, mm-hmm. it really like pokes through as like this isn't yeah. really fitting. I feel like yeah. that's what kind of makes the song not as good as it could have been. All right, let's get back to this album. We got two more. <laughs> chicken? What the hell? Why is chicken. this song named Chicken? Fortnite Chicken. All right, yeah, chicken. let's listen to Chicken. 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 Um, I expect I expected a. Uh some grilling noises but you know guitar, <laughs> guitar is fine you know all right oh wow god this is so mi- I like this song a lot, actually. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Favorites. I like the drums. I, I think I think that it didn't really drag at all, honestly. Yeah, I think it's a good Yeah, something about this song, it's like, it keeps driving <laughs> forward, and I I don't know, I like it a lot. I would I, 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 this... I think it's, like, top four? I, I do kind of feel bad that I didn't like it, like, too much, but I, ha- I have my reasons, because it's just, like, I feel like it could have used a minute of just, like, cooking ambience. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, so like, chicken, I, I just, like in Fortnite. Like some, no, but like some sizzling. Let him you know, cook. Like, you, you know how, like, the last song on, like, uh, Wind Swept the Dawn ends with, like, beach noises? Yeah. Why didn't, if it, it's chicken, so, like, I don't know. <laughs> I maybe, wonder why like, it's called that. Rev up the fryers know. or something, you know? Don't worry, like, I'll, I'll talk Sample your oven. I don't know, like, do me something. And, me and Paranol are actually Instagram mutuals, so I'll just ask him, you know. Yeah, ask him right now. Gotcha, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that song a lot. It was a, it was a good song. But um, now we have the final song. I can feel my heart touching you. Hey, yo! I love when it touches me. Hey, yo! You don't know how how old I am. Fourteen. Hey, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Alejandro, which uh, which color vinyl did you get for the um? Two. After the magic. Two. <laughs> Um, I got the the blue one. Like good, that uh, one's really cool looking. I was looking yeah. at them right now. That one's the best cool. Awesome That's the one. best one in my opinion. But the the purple one like sold out. It's already sold out. The purple one oh. looks cool, but it doesn't match the album cover. Yeah. yeah. 
The, the blue one is the best one. I think this used to be my favorite when I first listened to the album. Like, very first time. It was my favorite. This is like kind of a song you would just play like while doing something or I don't know, just like laying in your bed. It's true about like every single one of these songs. <laughs> they all hit right. like the same spot. Yeah, I could like zone out to this song. I can't believe that I avoided this album for an entire year because I, I added this to my plan to listen for 2022 when the year started. <laughs> yeah. So I Bro did not paranoid. listen. I avoided this album for an entire year. Bro, listen to death metal, but did not listen. And to then I, I guess I saved it for then for this year. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't even plan on like checking out Paranol, but like you wouldn't, like you you kept talking about him. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll listen to this trash. Oh, I have to. What just happened? What the hell? Okay, whatever. I don't care. I I kind of I, like I hate that? I hate to admit it, but I kind of already like tapped out of the record. Yeah, me too. Honestly, I mean this last track. It's okay. It's alright. It fit with the rest of the tracks, but nothing too uh, too special. I liked it though. Yeah. The the thing I okay. feel about this album is like half of the tracks are like all the same score, and then the other half are the ones that like stand out. Anyway, yeah, I give the song an 80, or the song, the album the song? an 80, the because, um, yeah, I do like the album. Uh, they are all good songs. What the fuck? The only thing I feel I that this album suffers from is some vocal mixing issues, and mostly the biggest issue is just, like, lack of, I don't know, uh, more interesting ideas throughout individual songs and pretty much and the entire album like every single song sounds very similar in its uh sound palette the, the thing is is that like the, the the thing that got me to to like this album more is kind of the the theme of it that's like kind of why i like the repetition because it, yeah, it, it no, almost feels I, like a story i agree like i like, I, I like the repetition like i think mm -hmm. it's really good to just like throw this album on just listen to it it sounds really great and it's just like the way it makes you feel is really good. But I'm saying the thing that's holding it back from being like an amazing like nine or ten album is that specifically. Right. Because like everything about the album is good except for the fact that like I'm not going to go and listen to like this specific song because I like this part of the song. Like I I probably will if I listen to it enough, but mm -hmm. nothing really jumps out at you on the first listen. It's like, well, that's uh, what that's what happened with me on the. It was like on the first list, and I feel like it's a, an album you have to get used to, kind of, mm -hmm. to, for to mm -hmm. to like it more, I guess. Yeah, no, that's why. Is, yeah, not to spoil anything, but that's why I feel like you might like the new album more. I feel mm -hmm. like it doesn't have that repetition that this one has. So, but I'm not gonna spoil anything. But, but yeah, my favorite tracks say. I think are "Excuse" and "White Ceiling" on the first listen. I first think listen, okay. I I like how "White Ceiling" sounds a lot, like. And I like that it is a 10 minute try. So, yeah. I'd say, yeah, for me, I mean, I don't know if I've, I mean, White Ceiling, uh, I don't know, probably Analog Sentimentalism, uh, Beautiful World, because it's just a really good opener, in my opinion. I don't know. I love, I like this whole album. I can't really, but White Ceiling is like my number one favorite, mm -hmm. like as of right now, as of uh, like, coming back to the record, like, you know, uh, months uh, ago. That's not a take I can get behind, but I respect it. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Alejandro and I had the same take. Enzo does not like us. Yeah, I'd like to about... see the next part of the dream. That's the song I rated the highest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um. now now that the album is over, I can officially say that After the Magic is significantly better than this record. This record has strong ideas, but they're not, they're not like, seen to the very end. Like, they're, they're not... The ideas here are like that. Like this album has a ton of potential, mm -hmm. and like for for like for what it's worth, all the like all the songs sound good. It's just like I don't know, like that the the whole like the album itself is just held back by like poor vocal mixing, some questionable production, weird like song structuring. Yeah, the song structuring was a little weird. I agree. 
and yeah. I don't know. I just I just feel like the like the lack of diverse ideas like throughout kind of took away like some of the immersion I had at the beginning. So Paranol, very good. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, I mean, I guess you kind of listened to like half of it through this video if you haven't. But uh, very good band, and I'm excited to see what their uh, future projects are tomorrow when I listen to... Um, should I? Should we listen to uh, the other album, the one that came yes, out after ab- this one? Ab- absolutely. No, the, not, not that one. The, um, oh, well, let's walk oh you want to listen to them in order? Let's walk on the path. Of, I mean, there's only three albums. Might as well. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like that album. I mean, I can just yeah. listen to it on my own. Yeah, I'll, I'll be listen better. to it on my own as well because I want to. I want to listen to after the magic. Yeah, so we're going on the parallel journey, 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 journey tomorrow. Journey. <laughs> Journeys. But um, yeah. So watch out for our review of the new parallel album. Yeah, watch soon. out. Don't watch it. And uh, like and subscribe and sub to the main channel and all that. And uh, we'll see you for and another review or video later. Bye. <laughs>